So we're kind of from everywhere, but we came most recently from Boston. We spend a few days a week there as part of the Health Box Accelerator program. Um, and we have a small investment that's come from Blue Cross Blue Shield, and they're, they're the ones that run the venture arm here for Health Box. Um, and now we're testing our solution with Blue Cross Blue Shield and also testing some integration with them as well. Uh, well can you help me with the video when we get to that? Great. So a, a familiar picture as we talk about family caregivers today, uh, we know that there are 44 million family caregivers in the U.S. alone, and these family caregivers, as aging in place continues to grow, they're required to do much more today than they've ever had to do in the past. And you know about IVs and catheters and things that normally you would never expect a family member to do. They're now required or starting to do some of those things. They're clinically undereducated, although in some cases they may be highly educated, but clinically they have minimal education. And they have little or no disposable time. And today, Ted Med is referring to this as the caregiver crisis. So if you're a caregiver today or have been one in the past, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you're not, you probably will be one soon, so it's still worth listening. Uh, we're going to show a quick 90-second video clip, an introductory video. Hi, I'm June. My mom's getting older and can't care for herself as much anymore. Learning to become her caregiver could have been complicated. Thank goodness for caring in place. See there? That's my mom. And that's my brother Andy helping mom with her blood pressure. Not only does caring in place let us know when one of us is at mom's home, but it also tells us all the right things to do to care for mom. The best part? It's free. Here's how it works. Download the app from the Apple or Android App Store or go to caringinplace.com. Enter a few details about mom's health. And Caring in Place provides you with a list of doctor recommended activities to help you provide mom with the best possible care. It even gives you instructions showing you how to complete each activity. Next, add your own to-dos to mom's care plan or any other recommendations from mom's personal doctor. Finally, invite family, friends, and neighbors to join in on mom's care. Caring in Place also has a care stream where all the caregivers can communicate and stay up to date on mom's care. Plus, mom's doctor loves it when I bring our caregiving progress report to her appointments. Caring for mom could be overwhelming. But with Caring in Place, I've got peace of mind knowing that mom is receiving the best possible care. And it gives me time to show how much I care, too. Caring in Place, the place for caregivers. So Caring in Place is a web and a mobile solution to help family members learn how to become family caregivers. Uh, through intelligent checklists, we help family members learn what to do, when to do it, and how to care for their aging loved ones. Our solution uses video, audio, images, and text instruction, and also enables family members to add their own tasks to the to-do list and then be able to share those and coordinate care with other family members, friends, and neighbors. Um, we know that today that family caregivers control 72% of all expenditures of the aging population, and so they're extremely powerful. And because of that, Caring in Place targets these family caregivers at the right time and at the right place with different products and services that can help them in caring for their aging loved ones and in a coordinated manner. Um, so here, here's a listing of different home services, home health care services, or even integrated devices that could be sold and integrated through Caring in Place. Uh, we, we had a We'll talk a little bit about transportation. So our intelligent checklist, if a family member has added a to-do list item that says take mom to the senior center, we understand that that is a transportation or elder transportation service that's necessary. And if the caregiver can't complete it or another family member or friend or neighbor does not do it, a help me button populates there. And by selecting the help me button, then they'll be presented with different service providers in that area that can provide that service. And at the same time, the service provider can then communicate back with the family to know that mom was dropped off at the senior center at 1030 and all as well. And that peace of mind is extremely important to our family caregivers. Um, we've already talked about Lively and we've talked about Evermind and some other integrated products that would work very well in the same type of platform to provide that peace of mind to the family caregiver. So with our intelligent checklists, we're able to target caregiver education. 
which uh, improves health outcomes, also reduces costs for these family caregivers, and ultimately provides that peace of mind. We provide care coordination and then also third party integration. It's important to know that family caregivers often look to their doctors or healthcare professionals or providers, even health associations, and in some cases, even insurance providers for guidance and direction on how to care and how to provide that support. So what we've done is now established partnerships with many of those types of organizations um, to help access the family caregiver and also to monetize those relationships. Uh, that's part of uh, the secret sauce that we work on, at least at HealthBox. And at the same time, we now are, as far as where we are in our product life cycle, we've got our first pilots that are launching in about three weeks, which we're excited about. We've got four different pilots that will test four different distribution models and four different monetization models as well, um, and across multiple platforms since we have an iOS device, an Android device, and also a web portal. So that's our solution. If you have products and services that may make sense to integrate into our platform, we'd love to talk to you. If you are investors, uh, we're now just currently starting a seed round of financing, and we'd love to speak with you as well. So thank you very much. How do you uh, react to or uh, work with existing professional caregiver organizations? Are you complementary or are you uh, competitive? Uh, are you saying like a National Caregiver Alliance type of yeah. organization? Or a Home Instead. Or home Instead, perfect. Okay. So a Home Instead or a Gentiva would be a, a perfect example of a national footprint type home health care service that could be integrated into our platform and their services could be aligned with the different tasks that family caregivers would complete and by it would be a lead generation for the most part for those types of organizations. How do we integrate payment means? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, where care comes from organizations that are paid maybe through Medicare or something other than out of pocket from a family caregiver? Did I understand that correctly? Okay, good question. Um, so we don't today and we do that on purpose because of the headache and the bureaucracy that comes along with all the billing on Medicare, et cetera. So today, all of our costs and expenditures um, come out of the pockets of the family caregivers, and it's what they are caring for today or paying for today on their own or would be interested in paying for if they're looking for monitoring devices within the home or even someone to mow the lawn. Um, it, it doesn't have to be clinical by any means, but it's all out of pocket from the family caregiver or family of family caregivers. I think one thing to point out is that you know Medicare doesn't cover custodial care at home, and you know I think a lot of this is actually, unless someone's on Medicaid, that this is stuff that's already an out-of-pocket thing. And I think they're trying to just make it a more efficient kind of service, wrap some service around what they're already doing, and just make it easier. You're exactly right because maybe it's it hasn't been clear enough here. We're not just clinical services by any means. It gets much broader than that. Yeah, yeah. So excellent. That, though that's the route that we're heading down. Um, you know, eventually as we get to some of that, and that would include even some integration into some of the EMRs, EHRs, et cetera, but for now, it's very much so a direct-to-consumer model, and by doing so, it allows us to move much more quickly and iterate and find out exactly what uh, the caregiver needs from us. We, we've spent a lot of time with caregivers, and we're really trying to solve the unique problems that they have today, um, whether it's stress or I'm the only one that knows how to do this, or I've got my lame brother who's not doing anything at all, and maybe we can at least get him to contribute some dollars to help out, care for mom. I mean, those are the types of concepts that we go through on a very regular basis. Down the road, we would love to make it so it's nice and integrated, and that payment will come from other sources than just from their pocketbook. Great, so for um, we know that from AARP and also from MetLife that from their surveys and data that there are direct correlations with health outcomes based on the amount of time that a family caregiver provides and even more importantly, how many tasks they complete on, on, on behalf of these uh, aging adults. And so with our pilots, the first thing we're testing are how many tasks they're completing, how many caregivers are they inviting to help care for this aging loved one, if they're creating tasks on their own and just activity in general. Uh, down the road, very much so, we'll want to qualify those health outcomes and, and on some of the pilots that we're running with either Blue Cross Blue Shield or Ascension Health or some of these groups be able to tie it directly to those 
um, health outcomes, but that's a, a much longer process, much longer surveys, and, and we'll get to that hopefully down the road. It's a very good question. Thank you. Um, we can talk about that a little bit later. If you'd like to, I'll give you just top level. We know that finding caregivers, as Iran had mentioned before, is often very difficult. So most of our business models are tied to other organizations, other providers that will benefit greatly from having a healthy aging adult or even a healthy and efficient, effective family caregiver. And so by using those different distrib distribution models, we've also found ways to monetize just bringing the caregiver into the platform. And ultimately, as we sell different products and services to those caregivers that are part of our caregiver base, we hope to monetize that piece as well. So be happy to talk after if you'd like to. Yeah, thank you. When are you launching? So after our pilots, uh, we're hopeful that we'd like to be launched near the end of the summer. Um, the pilots will run for about three months, but we'll be iterating throughout that whole cycle in hopes of launching live by the end of the summer. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>